Welcome back to They Did What, your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories, where I go over them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, going to go over a story title. I, a 32-year-old male, cut my mom off, a 50-year-old female, for my daughter on her first birthday. And guys, this story is all about a guy. He's 32, and he has had it with his mother. Mom had him when she was 17 years old. Real responsible. And growing up, mom was very much that gal who was always going to parties, drinking, recreational drugs, hanging out low lives, etc., etc. His dad and her split up when he was three years old, but she got custody, and it was a very rocky childhood. And eventually you're going to see she got involved with this total low life named Chris. Chris was always getting drunk, freaking out, causing domestic issues, getting arrested and all that. And eventually, he was out of the picture. And you're going to see, guys, in the story how the mom can never let go of the bad boy, bringing turmoil and havoc into his life. But when this guy gets older, has a child of his own, takes it to a whole new level when, when mom isn't letting go of her past, and eventually kicks mom to the curb, which he should have. And you'll see more what I'm talking about here. And I'm doing this one as an example, guys, to show you. Perfect example how some gals, and sadly there are a lot actually, more than some, they always carry the torch for the bad boy. And those bad boys are just, you know, the guys that are unpredictable and uh, they have to chase after and aren't easy to the ones that are complete thugs. Thugs in and out of jail, drugs, alcohol, abuse, and they just can't say no to them. And those types, guys, you cannot get involved with or give a chance, even to your own family. And if you got someone like that in your family that's bringing turmoil to you, your children, cut them off. I don't care if it's your own freaking mother. This guy's going to learn a lesson here. So let me go, go, I'm gonna go over here, guys, to show you again the point I make that people don't change. Most people don't change. It says here, <clears throat> my mom had me when she was 17 years old. My dad was in the picture, but they divorced when I was three years old. We lived in a very small town in northeast Oklahoma where there wasn't too much to do outside of party. She had purchased a house with some money she'd won from a lawsuit, a car accident, and didn't work. That is a stereotype. Oklahoma, middle of nowhere. No offense to the Oklahoma folks. Nothing else to do but drink and party, and she got money from a lawsuit that probably she bullshitted on. We spent every day together when I was very young, and she would often have me along for outings with friends, parties, and pretty much everything else. While she didn't use when I was in the womb, recreational drugs were always a part of her life before and after my birth. Where's Child Protective Services? My mom was always emotionally unstable. Shocker. With, with combined with the partying always made things much more difficult. Where's the grandparents? And why did he go with the father? Uh, growing up, the people my mom chose to surround herself were usually pretty shady. Her boyfriends, and there were many, were usually pretty sketchy. Most of the time, they, were, they weren't abusive, but made stupid choices and put us in bad situations. However, when I was 10 years old, my mom met this guy named Chris. Chris is an effing nightmare. Of course. So if he was 10 years old at the time, mom was 27. Still, you know, 20s, her prime and all that. Although I'm sure she doesn't look as good after years of uh, drugs and alcohol, probably smoking and obviously having a kid. On the surface, Chris was just an idiot. He was good-looking Mexican man with muscles, five o'clock shadow, and a serious drinking problem. Of course he has a drinking problem. My mom was effing nuts about this guy. Chris was the kind of person who, when sober, just thought he was the smartest person alive and would gladly tell you so. Know-it-all personalities. We've all known that guy before. He want to punch his teeth out. When he was drunk, anything that didn't go his way instantly set him into a violent rage. He would never hesitate to shove my mom or me around, rip the phone line out of the wall so we couldn't call the cops, get into fist fights with anyone or anything, the works. Shortly after meeting him, my mom got pregnant. Of course she did. So, mom has a history of being with scumbags. Maybe this guy's father was a scumbag too, I don't know. But now mom's pregnant with a, his kid, and this guy's got a younger brother. A lot of young guys, they have the abusive stepfather and they want to stake around to protect either the mom or the younger brother or sister. Before my little brother was one years old, Chris had been arrested for domestic, you know what, and was spending a lot, a long stint in jail. Of course he was. And yet mom still wanted him to have him in her life. 
He'd been arrested before for his abuse of my mom, but she would never press charges. He had done something stupid at a local bar and got into a fight with someone else. But it was nice that he was gone, and I begged my mom to never let him come back. She knew it was bad for us, but as soon as she was out of jail, he was back around. Of course, she is an awful mother, okay? People can make a mistake once, but she's a repeated cycle of uh, habit of being with scumbags, putting her kid in danger, and of course she's always drinking and partying, all that. Completely unfit mother. She's a piece of shit. That had nothing to do with her. The abuse slash jail slash return cycle was a thing for the next couple of years. My mom was split off from Chris, but always used your brother needs a dad as an excuse to bring him back around. She knew I didn't like it, so she would constantly lie to me about having him around. She was also always getting high or drunk and always fueled the problems. I always had the uh, option to move with my dad, but stay because I was the only one who could actually help keep my little brother safe. Well, that says a lot about this guy's character. Even as a young guy, he realized, I don't, I don't want to be around this asshole, but I want to protect the younger brother. It says a lot. When I was 15, I had enough. <clears throat> I cut my mom off, told her she needed to get her shit together and not call me until she did. 15 years old, he's telling his mom she needs to get her shit together. Situations like that make a lot of people grow up real fast. I moved in with my dad. Mom finally pressed charges against Chris and sold her house in the small town. Chris had practically kidnapped my baby brother in a drunken rage. They found him walking down a railroad track in the, co in the country at 3 o'clock in the morning in sub-freezing temperatures. With a little kid. This fucking lowlife. But you know what? He's a scumbag, but who's worse? The mother. Why? She keeps taking him back and putting her children in harm's way. But she's a piece of shit, too. She ought to be locked up, too. I'm sure things can be found. Actually, there are things that can be easily done to get her locked up for a while. Even his whole family cut him out of their lives. Eventually, she moved away from the small town and took my brother with her. She started to get sober. <clears throat> By the time I was 18 years old, she had moved back to Oklahoma, but to a different town about four hours away. My mom still had my brother, was clean, and was about to graduate nursing school. Nursing school, huh? There's a, given her behavior, she could certainly be a stereotypical nurse. Chris had made attempts to contact them, but had been turned down and reported for violating a restraining order that protected both my mom and little brother. Things seemed to be getting better. Sure about that? In the following decade, my mom stayed clean, or at least I didn't get caught using, and uh, kept her nursing job and got remarried. I had uh, met my wife. We lived about five hours away, but would regularly see my mom and brother. My mom had apologized for everything that happened in the past, and we rebuilt our relationship. So this guy's given her a second chance. She's gotten clean, supposedly, job, all that stuff. So he's given her a second chance. A lot of people wouldn't. After all that, I wouldn't have, to be honest, but this guy did. And let's see what happens with him giving her a second chance to see if she's a different person. Around four years ago, my mom was unhappy in her marriage. Nothing was horribly wrong. She had married someone the same age as her dad, and they, got in different, they had different goals in life. She's probably unhappy because there was no drama. That's why. And she married a guy who was old enough to be her dad. She's probably looking for somebody just to take care of her. She started making comments by getting divorced and living on her own. Every great now and then, she'd bring up how passionate her relationship with Chris was and that she missed being loved like that. There you go. Uh, Mom, recall all the drama. Recall him going to jail. Recall the turmoil and abuse and me being a little kid, can't fight back. Remember all that, Mom? And love, is that what you call love? But remember, guys, a lot of these gals, they, that's what they know. They don't, they don't, they, they, to them, the drama and turmoil, the butterflies, that's love. But a guy treats them like a human being, uh, well, he's a loser. It says here, uh, <clears throat> she would always counter that with things like, I would never bring him back, he was terrible, or something like to that effect. Eventually, COVID hit hard, and being a nurse, mom posed a huge risk to her older husband. She took this as an opportunity to move into her own rental home and away from her husband. She started making her own life without him, but still stayed married to him because she didn't want to deal with the hassle of going through a divorce. Well, that's real nice of her. I always suggested she should move forward with the divorce because she was unhappy. She had always been afraid of conflict and tried to avoid it at all costs. You mean responsibility, avoiding responsibility, and 
acting like an adult. Shocker. So she just didn't get a divorce. Eventually she even brought, bought her own home and now lives apart from her husband. Last year my wife and I welcomed our first child. Congratulations. And my mom was ecstatic. She had, she had, and my brother, the brother who is the son of that scumbag Chris, took time off work and made the trip to stay at our house and wait almost a month for the baby to be born. The day we brought back the baby from the hospital, my mom let a comment that slipped that blew my mind. She let it slip that Alice, Chris's sister, said that our baby was adorable. I had no idea my mom was still in contact with her, and I knew that the sister had once cut Chris out, but I told her the following. He says to his mom this, There is no one who has anything to do with Chris that will ever have anything to do with my daughter. That man has caused enough harm in our lives, and I'm not about to let it, sl- let it continue in- into hers. I don't want him to ever know her name, let alone what she looks like. Please do not share anything about her with anyone who has anything to do with him. Him knowing anything about her is a safety issue for all of us. He would absolutely use her to get to you just like he used to do with my brother. He's making abundantly clear, and he knows. But right down there, there with the smoke, there's fire. <clears throat> she was upset, shocker, but agreed that he had always had a negative effect on everything and said she wouldn't share anything with anyone else. I asked her if she'd been contacting him, and she was very expressively said, absolutely not. I told her that he would jeopardize everything she's worked for and that any involvement with him would absolutely ruin anything we have rebuilt. In other words, Mom, if I find out proof that you're having anything to do with him, we are done. You were a horrible mother growing up, but I give you a second chance after you got your shit together, supposedly. But if I find out you're contacting this guy, we're done. Fast forward one year. My mom, little brother, and the whole family are visiting for my daughter's first birthday. The night before the party, my wife and mom are in the car after getting some groceries. My mom answers her phone, and a man, not her husband, is on the other line. Ah, who could that be? He goes on to talk about how he misses my mom and he wishes she'd come back already. They end the call with a mutual, I love you. My wife came home and told my brother about, about me, and how odd it was, and asked my brother if he knew anything that was going on. My, bro- my brother is pretty visibly upset. He said, I know, but I can't tell you. What do you mean, bro, you can't tell me? He's an adult now and has been financially supported by my mom while he's in school. I told him I understand and that I won't pressure him for a name or anything else. I asked, will I be mad? And he responded, well, I'm effing livid. I confronted my mom about it and she lied over and over again, but eventually gave in. Not only was it Chris, ah, shocker, bad boys back in her life. But she had convinced him to move into the same town as her when she got her rental four years ago. She's been back with this scumbag for the last four years, lying four years. There you go. That's what you get for giving this piece of shit a second chance. But you know what? He obviously is a good man. I wouldn't give her a chance ever again after this. She'd been blackmailing my brother into not telling me. But there have been serious safety concerns. I looked online and found several instances in the local newspaper where he'd been arrested. Leopard doesn't change the spots. Each time she tried to push him away, but she always brings him back because she's lonely. This is the woman that's married, I might add. <clears throat> I told her that because she brought my brother and her mom that they can stay for the party. After the party, we're cutting my mom off completely. It's about fucking time. I told her I won't allow her to have anything to do with my daughter until she found some way to prove Chris had been out of their lives for six months and she'd been working with a therapist for six months. Dude, you are too fucking nice. You give her a second chance, your mom is not going to change. That scumbag is going to be involved with her life until he drops dead or he's put in prison for life. And even then, she'll be contacting him. She was very upset, but she didn't really fight it very much. She said that she'd get rid of him, but I really can't trust that at all. You can't trust that. I asked her if her husband knew. Of course he didn't. I told her that she needs to tell him. I told her she had four days to tell him in person or that I was going to call him. She absolutely effing lost it. She started blaming me, saying things like, you're so judgmental. Why would you want to hurt my husband like that? You're just trying to punish me. Why are you so mean? Uh, Mom, you were a horrible mother, and I gave you a second chance. And clearly you have proven the stereotype accurate. And of course you're twisting things around making me out to be the bad guy here. You're cheating on your husband. You brought this low life back into your life and ours. And I'm not going to have my daughter involved with you or this guy. Period. You're not going to see your fucking granddaughter. 
I was blown away that it seemed to bother her more than the idea of losing her grandchild. Al tried to explain that these are her actions that are hurting people, uh, not that they, are, they know it is happening. I also tried to explain that, that she is jeopardizing her nursing license and everything she's worked for, and that is that. And he had an abrupt ending to the story. But anyhow, guys, too bad it's too, too abrupt. But the point is, people don't change. Well, listen, most people don't change. Sometimes there's things, uh, situations where people can change, by and large. And these gals that, from an early age, whatever it is, it draws them into not just bad boys, but like thugs like this. The guys that get in bar fights or in and out of prison, that type of thing. They don't change. They never change. Don't waste your time. So for you guys out there that do date relationships and you feel inclined to help that damaged girl who gives you the sob story about abuse of ex-boyfriends, don't get involved because she'll cheat on you the first chance she gets with a guy like that if she's not actually cheating already. And they don't change. And she'll get bored with you because gals like that seem to think that that's all they're worth. That they're so used to guys treating them like garbage and, got, and attracted to scumbags like that that uh, a guy treats them like a human being, they'll become resentful of them. They'll think, why would he treat me so well? Because all these other guys treat me like crap. God, I now resent this guy. I will treat him like crap. I have to go right back to the guys treating him like that. Don't be that way. And if you got a parent that grow, sadly gets involved with scumbags and brings that into your life, cut them off. Life's too short. You have asshole family members that bring turmoil into your life. You can't. You just can't do that, guys. Life is too short. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's family. Well, guess what? I have family. There's people I don't talk to. Now, not everybody's like me, but uh, life is short. But generally speaking, like I said, people don't change. So this guy, in my opinion, even though he said, we're done, and he did say, okay, you got six months to prove this, she'll keep talking to the guy. It's not going to change. And you really want to have your this guy have his daughter potentially subjected and have this guy potentially around? You can't trust her. I wouldn't trust her at all. Anyway, guys, it's a quick one, but more, less of a crazy story, more about just a reality and a stereotype that we all know too well. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me think about this. Let me know, guys, if you know people like this. Any gals that just a family member or somebody you once dated or whatever that like, was drawn to these low lies, couldn't let them go, and brought a lot of turmoil into your life, I'd like to hear about that. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.